There's a little bit of shading above the lip. Most detail was probably in his jacket. This is why a lot of people like their sketches more than the actual finished product. There's no shading there. It's implied because the line is not straight. Hello, and welcome to the Rummaging Ferret. So right now I'm working on Dark Sand. I've already put the base colors in. And he still looks like he needs something. Put in some smaller details and the wings, and I put a gradation in there. And I'm looking to improve my art, right? Don't we all? What I've been doing, my Pinterest. Uh, let's see here, where is, how do I get to? These are all my pins. Where are the pins I saved? Saved. I can do things, really, I promise. More ideas. What I try to do is I try to study other people's work a little bit to figure out why I like what I like about their stuff. And I've noticed a lot of the time it's details, right? So one of the things you can do to help improve your art is to actually use gradients, which I used on the wings. You can also use different colors for your line work. Texture is really good. Think how bland this would look if there was none of this texture on any of it, right? So if this was just plain and it was just this color all the way through, so they've got a gradient that's from a slightly darker blue to a lighter blue. This is just line work, right? This is not really color or shading or anything. I mean, he uses his line work to shade. So you can see this slightly different gradient from this darker color to this lighter color where it's almost white, but it's like an off white and then the back is like real white, right? But think how plain this would look and how dull this would look without these sort of contour lines that are on here to actually show kind of a little bit of the shape of the cloak. There was another really good one that was like all just flat color, but it had so many details in it. So this has minimal shading to it. So there's a little bit on the chest here. There's a little bit on this cape, but like look at the shirt. Most of that is just flat color. The gloves, there's a little bit of a dark shadow there. It's nice even that dark. There's a little bit in the wings, but look at these wings, right? So I've got wings in mine, but look at theirs. There's this little itty bitty bits of texture here and there, almost like it's shading, but it's not. Just kind of hidden amongst the feathers. But most of this, there's not a lot of shading. What is shaded is very, very subtle. If you look at his feet, his legs, even up to his like kneecap, other than right in kind of like his groin area, it's pretty light. And that's pretty much the only shading you really see on there. He's got these little bits of detailing in the feathers. There's even a little bit of marking right there. So it could just be that maybe I am just putting enough detail in some of the illustrations. Let's see if we can find another example. Ah, Pinterest, why do you do this to me? What I'm really looking for is kind of like very simple flat colors and see what sort of things that they do to liven up their artwork. Like this one, I don't think this one even has any shading on it. Yeah, so this one doesn't have any shading on it. So it's got a different color for the outside line. You see that they use black here, but then they have this light color interior line, right? And he has no shading on him. There's a little bit under the neck, and that's really kind of it. You can see like these little hash marks to show fur, and that's kind of the little details that really kind of make artwork good. You've got the little dots for like the whisker lines, and you got the whisker lines on this side. They don't actually show the whiskers on this side. Just these three little lines there, right? It's something that's visually interesting that takes up space. He doesn't really use any kind of gradation other than the color of the line art. See, there's a bunch of lines right in here, but they're all lightly colored so they don't stand out. So a lot of these are not dark line work or anything like that. He just uses the dark outline on the outer edge, but not on the inner edge. So all these lines are pretty light. So this is Inma's stuff. So you can see like there's a gradation in the face from a lighter color to a slightly darker color as you go up. And of course she's got shading for the hat and everything. But if you look, there's a little bit of shading above the lip. And of course she's got like slightly deeper corners in the lips. So you got two lines over here and then one thicker line over there. She's got like two dots for like lip gloss. Not actual lip gloss, but the shine that's on the lip because it's a moister part of the body. So it's got like a little bit of a shine to it. And of course the little divot underneath the lip. But look at the skin over here. See the texture? And it's very subtle. And it's even in the shaded parts. It's on the shoulder here. See a bigger splotch here. And there's different tones and variation. So this one's flat colors, but you can tell 
that they added a paper texture to it to give it a little bit more character so that way it's not just a solid chunk of just straight color like this one's just flat colors there's no shading in this whatsoever but look at the detail in the hair right all of these strands you can see like a little bit of texture in it is all this line work, right? The only thing that's shaded is just under the neck, right? Because if it was flat colors, that neck bit would be the same color as the face, but they didn't do that. And you can see like right here where her clavicle is, they've got a little bit of like broken lines there and just like a simple dot there. And here the lines are put together so much that they almost look like shading. Got some of like, it's not really shading, it almost looks like the background color back there. So you can see like the background color that's here, that's coming through the hair is also coming through the hair up here. That might actually be shading right there, but she used different tones just to differentiate the foreground hair from the background hair. So under her head, like where her lips are and her nose, is a slightly different color than where the eye, the third eye is. And there's slightly different tones. Now look at the lines in this finger. That line didn't need to be there, right? But she put it in. So there's three lines there, right? In the cracks and crevices of the hands. And it's all just line work. Even though it's flat colors, it looks so good because of how much detail she's put into the line work. There's hatching on her lips. You show a little bit of texture there because our lips aren't typically completely smooth. You got a little bit of dots, just small lines around the corner of the eye, around the edge of the nostril, on just a random line on the cheek. This one's really good. It's just how much detail is in the line work. Most detail was probably in his jacket because everything else is monochrome, you know, and his jacket is a contrasting dark color compared to all the light that's surrounding him. It makes him stand out more, right? He's almost like the whole of a donut. This one's pretty simple. So there's a bit of a gradient here, but it's pretty much just flat colors and mostly just scribbles. So there's a darker part here up on top. It's almost like a pinkish kind of purple and then it goes to a dark blue kind of color and then a light blue as you go down and then the hands go back into a pink. This is why a lot of people like their sketches more than the actual finished product is because those sketches are usually really loose and scribbly and those scribbles are kind of what gives it filler or fluff or detail. Detail, it takes up space and it makes it look more busy. If this wasn't a sketch and you just had a clean line around this, a lot of these lines would be missing. Like you probably wouldn't add that line or that line. This line would be gone. These little kind of extra bits here, that little swoop right there wouldn't be there. You know, and that's why a lot of people like their sketches over the finished product is because it's not really details, but it takes up space, right? So details would give information. This doesn't actually give any kind of information. It's just just lines that are there to take up space to make it look fuller. I guess this is all flat colors, but it's just patterning, right? This looks pretty cool. There's no shading. Like, look at the cracks. What should be a canyon in the fold of the clothes right there? There's no shading there. It's implied because the line is not straight. So these stripes bend to that fold, but there's no shadowing there, which I think gives it a pretty cool look. I like this artist. I'm not sure who this artist is. This would not have the same impact if these stripes were gone, if this pattern was gone, if the sleeve was just blank. It's all because of the little details that they're shoving in there, and like right in here. You can see it's like implied folds, right? These lines are not straight. This one's flat colors, right? But because of her spots, pattern actually takes up a lot of space. And you have the line work of just folds here. She has this little seam. So if you got clothes that you're drawing, you need a little bit extra oomph or it looks too plain. It looks like it needs something. Usually it's because you're missing a seam or something that probably should be there. She could have done a little bit extra detail here by adding a seam to these leggings. So look at the detailing on this. They put this pattern across the entire thing, including his like ears. Look at the detail on his pants, right? I suggest you go and look for details in a lot of different artwork clothes. Like if you're drawing legs, right? So you can draw just like a straight leg, but then you might have like a little line suggesting an ankle or maybe character has a little bit of hairy legs. So you just put like a little bit of stippling on there. Maybe they just recently shaved. But yeah, you can see stitching next to the seam. So the other person we looked at just had the seam. You could take it one step further and do the stitching next to the seam. His apron has a little bit of detailing here. That wasn't necessary. Necessary, but they put it in. Um, there's a gradient here from red to purple, black to blue. 
Like, look at the lines on these knees. Granted, this is a spider, but see how the knee jets out? Some people do different details for knees. So this person actually scooped out the knee like it's two adjoining parts, which is a bit like what the spider has on her joints. Well, their joints. So some people put just like a couple of dots on the knee instead of leaving the knee blank, like a suggestion of a divot or something in the knee. Like most anime styles will have like a little shadow there underneath the kneecap, just so it's not so blank. Like that would not have the same impact if that was not there. So it's just kind of going through and finding these tiny little details that other people use and kind of making note of the details that they use. Like especially around like eyes and stuff, right? Some people actually put like a shadow underneath the eye a little bit. This person has kind of like that roll of the lip of the eye and then has like the eyelid. So like the whole eye is drawn there but you can see where the lid covers part of the eye. And there's little itty bitty increments of shading or there are little pockets around the eye. But they're not really there in reality, right? But again, it's there to kind of fill space a little bit. So like, remember those couple of kids sitting on the porch? Well, this person has a different way to show kind of like the kneecaps. So they shade a little bit kind of vertically instead of horizontally. And there's a little bit of shading here kind of suggesting a little bit of an ankle. So like again, here in the knee, you just have this simple little line here. But look, there's even this little line that shoots off up here. Right. Look at that. That's a line that most people wouldn't even draw. Not only do they have the seam in the pants and they have like some light creases in the pant, then they have this rolled edge. The seam is off. So you have the seam comes down, you got your rolled pant leg, and then there's another seam there. Then you have that line for the kneecap. But then look at this ankle. But you have the line that suggests that bulbous edge part of your foot underneath the big toe. All these little lines, these weren't necessary. Fabric doesn't quite fold like that, but they're just lines to kind of take up space. They're not necessarily giving any information. So folds in fabric tend to go in the direction that they're pulled. So this one's kind of accurate because she's got her hand in her pocket, right? But you're not seeing any kind of other bulging going on there. This one's pretty accurate because the lines would be going into the crotch. That's where things are being pulled to. But these, these are like, these don't make sense. <laughs> like, they're just kind of there for filler. Same like up here. You know, this line here, this line here. They're not part of the outfit. It's not really straps. It's just the sketchiness with the line work to give it a little bit more visual interest. If you just did a solid line there, it wouldn't be nearly as interesting, right? So you have a block of color, but then you have this disjointed line that's not attached to anything onto the side. I mean, look at the cigarette, right? You could see where it's been burnt up and it's just turned to ash and you got flakes of ash coming off. There's a gradient in the hair to kind of separate it from the rest of the face. But that's a very simple drawing and it's very flat, but it looks really nice because of the simplicity. It's this sort of contrast between detail work that's all kind of monochromatic down here and then details in the face and everything. So it's details empty. Like this person could have put details in this arm and all of that like they did much for like the face and the eyes. Look how, how messy this looks, right? It looks really nice, but you can see how messy this is. They're putting more lines around the face area to make this a little bit more of a detailed area. Busy space, simplistic, busy. You're naturally gonna gravitate towards the face because this busy chunk is separated from this busy chunk with a simplistic area. You know, it's simple colors, it's flat, there's no shading, unlike around the neck. There's no gradient like in the hair. So that gradient, those details, that line work, that extra sketchiness is what draws your eye up. Because there's no gradient on the pants and because of how dark that is and that dark top kind of separates everything, your eye is going to naturally go upwards because of that. Not only that, but your eye automatically usually wants to go to a face. By adding the gradient, by putting extra lines in, that's where your eye is going to go. So really, when you don't like your final product, but you're like your sketch is better, it's because you're not putting enough detail into your line work as it is. So like, I feel like this face looks terrible. Part of it is because it's not shaded. There's not additional lines or anything. There's no nose. There's no highlights in the eyes. There's no like where you can see the upper eyelid or anything like that. It's very simplistic lines here. Whereas like everything else is pretty detailed. I need to bump up what I'm doing to this face by adding extra lines around the eyes adding some shadow 
doing. Pants have extra details. The shirt's got extra details. This vest is incredibly, like, detailed. The only thing that's not on that vest is a pattern. If I stuck a pattern on that vest, that's where your eye would go automatically. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed me and my ferrets, it's free to subscribe. And remember, there's magic in art.